filming yourself in actual public? Yeah. Super uncomfortable, but we're gonna do it anyways and he's gonna keep looking at me. Good morning, my beautiful friends. I am pushing myself this morning to leave the house and go work instead of staying home. I've been staying home to like study, work, edit, do anything I need until Brian gets home and then I'll, you know, go do stuff with him or we'll go work together somewhere so that I have someone to open doors for me and uh, I feel like he's a buffer between me and the world. I feel less awkward, less weird walking around without a leg if he's with me. But I couldn't really focus at home today and I wasn't getting a lot done and I want good coffee that I don't have at home. So that's that's step number one. But step number two is I also didn't want to put makeup on today and I was like, oh God, but if I'm leaving the house, I really need to because people are going to stare at me and if you have been here for a while, I've talked about this in a previous video, which I will link up above, feeling like if I'm leaving the house now, I have to look put together because people are looking at me. And I still can't wear any kind of prosthetic wig because of the cyst, lump, abscess, whatever it is. Today I was like, you know what, no, I really don't feel like doing it. Like it won't be a fun thing for me today. I'm going out, not put together by myself and uh, we'll see how it works. I may have made a horrible mistake. I forgot that it snowed like a lot yesterday and so the parking lot is full of the bane of my existence. Cake batter that happens uh, the day after snow. I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, I might die. Good news, guys. Uh, I made it. I was able to get into the coffee shop and over the ice obstacles successfully. I feel like I should like I can't do it in the car, but like make one of those like successful arm in the air motions that gymnasts do because I feel like I accomplished a great feat. But this was my first time that I went to anywhere aside from a post office, which was walking in, walking out actually alone and especially without a prosthetic leg. So it's like just me on crutches trying to get into a building that doesn't have handicap accessible buttons um, with no leg and carrying heavy bags, which looks pretty awkward. I'm super uncomfortable about it, right? And I texted my husband just out of frustration. I was like, God, like I feel so weird. Like I just feel like such a weirdo right now. Like. I'm that person that everyone is talking about and whispering about. Um, like, I feel like I look so effing weird. And he replied with, I think you mean beautiful. And that actually turned my day around because he's the sweetest guy ever. So um, it was actually really nice to get out of the house and to just sit and work for a couple hours. And I got a lot of stuff done. And now I'm off to get my brain right, talk to my lovely therapist, and go from there. So I feel good. I feel good heading into counseling today. So I don't know how many of you guys actually have ever gone to counseling, but on the days when I'm like super upset and having a hard time, I, I know what I'm there for. But um, when I roll up to counseling and I'm like, God, I'm, I'm doing good. I don't even need a, I don't need a therapist today. Like I should probably just cancel that. I've learned to be afraid of those days and uh, today was no exception. I talked in past videos about having difficulty sleeping and feeling anxious a lot of the time. And I think when you make a decision like I made to amputate your leg, like I made that decision, I was sure of it, but you can't actually be sure. Like it's a giant leap of faith, like a leap of faith that I've never, ever, ever, ever taken. And I, there's no way I could have allowed myself to feel all of the emotions that were actually there at the time. Because I made a decision and about two and a half weeks later, I actually had the amputation. In retrospect, it was probably kind of rushed, but I needed it to be because I knew what I wanted and I knew that I couldn't drag it out. And I don't regret that. But at the same time, I didn't have time to panic. I didn't have time to like sob. I didn't have time to be super afraid. I was aware that I was feeling those emotions. And if you go back and watch some of those videos, like you can see it. But I also felt like I had to convince everyone around me that I was sure of this. Because a lot of people understandably had doubts. Um, so I think I, I felt like I had to project this image that like I was, you know, scared, it's a big deal, but like I was good, like I, I knew what was I knew what was going on. And I was thinking specifically about the moment today, because I was writing about it. 
that. I said bye to my husband, I kissed him bye, I hugged my mom bye, I was on the surgery bed and the anesthesiologist was like, it was just me and him, you know, it was, it was time. And when I actually think about that moment alone, it brings tears to my eyes because of the panic that I felt. But I shoved it all down then too because I was like, well, we're doing this, aren't we? I started this train and I can't get off of it now. And then that's basically like when I like faded out and went to sleep. I don't think I ever processed any of that fear, any of that panic. I just shoved it down. And the thing with putting emotions on shelves, which I have a lot of experience with, is that they don't go away. We just put them somewhere. And I think the reason why I've been filled with like so much anxiety about everything all of the time, way more than usual, is because it's like displaced emotion, you know? I didn't let myself feel anything before, and so after, my body's like, hey, all that fear that you weren't feeling, all that panic is still here. It needs to be noted, it needs to be noticed and taken care of. And that was kind of a realization for me today. And on the one hand, it still feels so utterly pointless. Like, it feels so, it feels so pointless to me. As someone who talks about mental health a lot, I really have issues feeling emotions when I feel like there isn't a point to them. Like getting angry, I don't get angry at stuff, like ever. Cause I'm like, well, what's the point? Like if I can't do anything about it, I can't do anything about it. Even if it's something horrible. But anger's there for a reason. Like we have emotions for a reason and we're meant to experience them. And I need to emotionally participate in this journey. And I think that maybe that's what grief means and grief looks like. It means feeling things instead of shoving them in boxes on shelves where we hope, I hope they don't emerge again. Because they do emerge again. Because they emerge in the fact that I'm anxious all the time. They emerge in the fact that I can't or don't want to sleep. And it's weird to think about the fact that in the past four months, I made the decision to amputate my leg. Two weeks later, I had that done, and now I'm here. That's a very short period of time and a lot to absorb. And I'm very proud of how far I've come, some days. Other days, I like beat myself up, but I know that like, I am proud of how far I've come. And in the videos right after surgery, I mention a couple times like, keep waiting for emotions to hit. Like I keep waiting for that to happen and it's not happening. So maybe I'm fine. And sometimes I just have to laugh at how naive I really can be. I think the thing about experiencing this new normal is that I have to go through it. I think if you've ever experienced anything, if you've ever gone through any trauma, if you've ever dealt with mental illness or anything like that, you know what I'm talking about. You can't go under or over something to get past it. We have to go through it if we really want to get through it. And so, I'm trying to participate in that. So last night, Brian drove me out to our P.O. box and you guys, um, I was able to pick up a bunch of letters from all of you and I cannot tell you how much that means to me. Like sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, Thank you, and I'll be writing back momentarily. Also, I wanna say a huge personal thank you to Andrew and April and Marilyn, who are new Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your generosity and supporting me and what I'm doing here. I don't really know how to properly thank you, like honestly. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, truly from the bottom of my heart. Um, that means the world to me, not that you all just watch, um, but that so many of you support me in so many different ways, so thank you guys so much.